Hello and welcome. In this video we will show how to do multiple regression using Excel. Multiple regression is a method used in statistics to predict the outcome of a response or dependent variable using two or more explanatory or independent variables. On the right side of the screen you see the regression equation that we will use to fit the data. On this sheet you see the age of the passenger, duration, distance and price of London taxi rides. We are interested to see how we can predict the price of our upcoming taxi rides in London based on the available data. The second equation that you see is the regression equation for our problem. To do the multiple regression, we need to make sure that the data analysis tool pack is loaded in Excel. This can be done by navigating to File and selecting Options. A menu opens where you select Add-ins and press on Go next to Manage Excel Add-ins. Here you make sure the checkbox next to Analysis Tool Pack is checked and you press on OK. Now you can see under Data that Data Analysis is added. You click on Data Analysis and select Regression. A menu opens where you can insert the dependent and all independent variables. The Y range represents the dependent variable. So we select the range E2 to E17. The X range represents the independent variables which are loaded in columns B, C and D. So we select the range B2 till D17 as inputs for the X range. We have also included the labels in the ranges. So we tick off the labels box. Before we click on OK, we choose a location in the workbook where we want the analysis to appear. We want to make it appear next to our input table, so we select G2. Click on OK and you see the analysis output appear on the screen. The output of the analysis is divided into three parts. First we have the regression statistics that tell you how well the calculated linear regression equation fits your data. The second part shows you the different components of the sum of squares and gives you an idea of how reliable the model is. The final part of the regression output represents the different variables in the regression and the linear regression equation. The most important block of output is the third one. So in this video we will mainly focus on this, but in the other two parts I'll highlight the most important figures to see what they represent. In the regression statistics part the most important figure is the adjusted R-square. It represents the R-square adjusted for the number of independent variables in the model. In the case of multiple regression you always want to use this form of the R-square. In our example, this figure is 0 0.978, which means 97.8% of the observation of the dependent variable are explained by the independent variables. This figure is higher than 95% and hence considered a good fit. The ANOVA table shows the reliability of our model. The most important figure in this context is the significance f value, which is the probability that all regression coefficients are 0. In other words, we test the reliability of the entire model. When the significance f is smaller than 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis that all regression coefficients are zero, and we can say that the model is reliable. In our case, the significance f value is well below that threshold, so we can conclude that our entire model is relevant for our data. The first column in the third table gives the estimated coefficients for the regression equation. The second column, standard error, gives the standard errors or estimated standard deviations of the least squares estimates. For the third column, we first have to say that Excel performs hypothesis testing for each regression coefficient. Excel tests the null hypothesis that the coefficient is zero. The t-stat and p-value columns show the corresponding t-statistics and p-value for these tests. The last two columns show the 95% confidence interval for the regression coefficients. Now we focus on the p-values as these are the most important figures besides the regression coefficients themselves. A commonly chosen threshold to say that the coefficient is significantly different from zero and hence that the independent variable is relevant is 0 0.05. We see that all values are lower than 0 0.05 except for the one of the age. This is something we could expect, as the age of a person is only random and will not be an influential factor for the price of a taxi ride. Another clue for this could have been when you first created the scatter plot with a trend line for each variable. We have done this on the second Excel sheet. 
The trend lines fit the distance and duration variables nicely in contrast to the age variable, where you see a fairly random distribution of the observations. Now that we have concluded that the age variable is not relevant, we will do the regression again without the age variable. To do so, we go back to data, data analysis, and change the input X range to C2 till T17. We put this output below our first output, so we select G25 as output range. We press on OK and see the output appear on the screen. The three p-values are below the 0 0.05 threshold now, and hence this model fits the data well. We have defined our model and can use it to forecast the cost of our upcoming taxi ride in London. We need to take a cab from the airport to our hotel. This is a 20 miles drive. Our flight is at night, so there won't be any traffic. We expect that the ride will take 30 minutes. To compute this, we type equals the coefficient corresponding to the duration variable times 30 plus the coefficient corresponding to the distance variable times 20 plus the intercept. We press enter and see that the estimated cost is 59.98 pounds. This concludes our tutorial on multiple regression in Excel. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Be sure to subscribe if you want to watch more Excel or software related tutorials. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.